Okay. Um, as a staff member, I, I got caught up in um, a number of issues to do with quality for teaching. So, um, in 2011, I was involved in the online um, trial of Moodle. So, I, I kind of had a bit of an early start in terms of Moodle. Um, that went okay, uh, but I'm not particularly courageous, and so I only did little iterations of developments in my course. Um, so I'll just stop here for a minute. Could, um, Shane, could you get my course up for me? I haven't done any face-to-face -face teaching for a while, so I'm not sure how to log on in the lab. Um, so in 2012, uh, what I did was I actually tried to develop a little bit more um, what I was doing in my, in my Moodle course. Um, so for me, learning design or designing for learning is, is the thing that I'm working with. Um, but it came a little bit from the literature because I looked at the UK literature. I don't know, maybe it was how I actually resourced it. Um, but it tended to be UK literature. So, and the focus for me was on discussion forums. I really wanted to know um, how do I actually get students to participate in discussion forums. Um, I guess the theoretical idea behind that is that I should be aiming to introduce students to um, the opportunity to have um, to work with others in a learning community. So that was really the idea behind it. Now, in addition to using the UK literature, I um, did some practical things that can only have come from intuition. Mostly I can justify what I've done in terms of the literature, but a lot of the time, I just instinctively knew that there might be a problem with doing it a particular way. And so, you know, I have to, I have to concede that sometimes I did just do what I thought was really practical for the students. Um, I can't say that, that everything worked, but I think it's important to say that um, for me it was try it, assess it, if it doesn't work, then it's a continuous process of improvement. So 2013, this year, I'm looking at another iteration. Um, when I look at my course, it looks quite complex because there's a lot of information there. Um, I do actually have three, to three forums that I run. Uh, one is um, an announcement forum, which is where I give students uh, information. They can't actually log into that one. Uh, the second forum I have is um, a complaint forum and it begins with the title Dear Denise. Okay, so if they've got anything that they want to complain about, they complain there and then I, it's open so that everyone in the course can see and I don't have to respond to that, that, uh, that complaint more than once, hopefully. So what I do then is if they've got an issue, um, I write one email and hopefully that will be the end of it because I, I am actually interested in um, crowd control. It's a term, a term that I've always used in terms of undergrads and also in terms of postgrads. Um, so when it comes to the discussion forum, it looks a little bit different to, um, uh, to the other forums. And uh, for me, because I went from 2011 to 2012, and I took a lot of my ideas about teaching from my face-to-face -face teaching. It was kind of like a, an iterative thing. So um, I've actually structured it in the weekly format. Other people use grids, but for me, this seems to make more sense. So the first thing I did was work out, well, how do they know what group they're in? Um, now, I made a number of assumptions about people, and so Moodle has this great function where you can enrol people automatically, which I did, but I didn't make it mandatory. I knew that if I enrolled everybody in, suddenly they're going to think, oh, I'm in a group, now I've actually got to do something about it. Um, and I knew that they would change, but, but that didn't matter. Uh, in terms of the context, I have defence students and public service students, all of whom are time short. And so um, I treated the online discussion forum as something that was... Um, asynchronous. So in other words, I had to think very carefully about how I would actually time the discussion forum for them. So I gave them an option of different um, topics uh, according to different dates and they had to choose one week that was suitable to them in their um, schedule outside of the course, you know, in terms of their working lives. And I figured that was probably the best that I could offer them in terms of scheduling. So what happened was people changed and Moodle gave me the option to change people around. Uh, and this is basically the grouping that, that I came up with. Um, what happened towards the end of the semester is there are a number of people who didn't actually um, manage to fit into the earlier groups. 
So I had a number of extra ones on the end, and if they missed that, that was their final option. They didn't get any marks at all uh, for their involvement in that particular group um, assessment. Um, the other thing about the discussion forum um, is that it's, in my course, it's actually quite a um, central learning activity. So it's one learning activity nestled amongst another two. And so it has, for me, uh, the discussion forum is very much like being in a tutorial where if I was a student, I'd like to know relative to others what I was actually making of the literature that I'm reading. Um, and so that's what you get in being in a group in a face-to-face -face situation where you're talking to other students and you say, oh, I don't understand this concept or I don't understand that concept or that's absolute nonsense. It doesn't work like that in the industry that I work in. So most of the students are mature age and they all work. So they've got a lot of uh, background knowledge that they can draw on and so I was thinking in terms very much of an MBA class where you bring them in and you facilitate it and they are actually able to bring in life experiences and uh, to make sense of the readings in that way. Um, so I made the assumption that they were self-directed, they're capable of learning, they could do it all on their own um, and of course this is backed up in the, in the online literature. Um, I also made the assumption that I wouldn't do much in the forums, that I would facilitate it and I would give control to the students, and this is also backed up in the, in the literature that I read. Um, so they were given the opportunity to choose, um, move around in groups, and then I ended up with uh, these are uh, sort of like a, a range of the discussion forums that we ended up having. Um, if we go back up to the top here, this is their, um, in, these are their instructions. And the idea is that the people in these groups would run this forum as their own forum and act as discussants. And they would then um, also engage with other students in the course who could come in and have a chat with them about the same thing. Um, now, the key to this as being a learning activity that's nestled within other learning activities is that each week they would take a seminal article. So in other words, I wanted them to lift beyond the textbook to a seminal article on that particular topic. They would critique that article in terms of what that theory applied to their understanding of how things worked in practice in the workplace from, based on their experience. Um, and so I wanted to, to, to develop their critical ability. Um, so basically what they did was individually they would contribute to the forum and then they were to write me a critical analysis of that article. So the learning activity was quite crucial to their assessment in the course. Um, so if I just go back again, and I've learned that if I click here, it doesn't always work. Um, so uh, if I go back here <clears throat> to this one here, um, they were given 25 marks. This one is a guide to critical analysis. So how, how do you actually critically analyse an article? So they had that up front. They knew uh, before they began what it was that I was actually looking for them to, to produce. Um, the other one, and this one is possibly of more interest to you, um, is this one on discussion postings. Now, this one comes from Garrison, and there's a lot in the UK literature that says, well, how do you actually get students to engage in a discussion forum? Um, so, in an experimental sense, um, the students, well, in, in to my, I was thinking it was experimental. For the students, this is what they received. This was their posting guide. How do you actually post online? Uh, what is it that we're supposed to be achieving? Now, uh, with the posting guide, they were asked to look at uh, particular uh, things in the, in the paper that were interesting. I wanted them to explore. Sometimes their ideas would diverge and that was okay. Uh, sometimes they would converge and that was okay. Could they actually integrate material and could, up, could they come up with a resolution? Now there was no set question, it was about critiquing the article. So that was for me a, a kind of experimental thing. But if I go back to this again, the point for me is that this one here, the discussion posting guide, is, I used it as their assessment. So I was assessing them on the process, on their contribution to uh, the learning community and how they contributed to critical discussion. Um, whereas this one here um, is more about the outcome. So did they actually achieve the learning outcome that I wanted them to achieve? Um, then, um, so just to give a sense of what was going on, um, 
The two most popular areas of interest seem to be, uh, oh, hang on, I'm in the wrong place. And, oh, you know, navigation, of course, is a challenge as well for me as well. So, um, if we go to the uh, discussion for forum, uh, what we find down here um, is that the topics were all different. So, the students responded to different topics in different ways. Um, some responded, you know, you might have a small group, but there might only be five replies, seven replies, 16 replies, 12 replies. Uh, this one here. The one on um, strategic HRM seemed to really get them going. They really liked it, you know, and they just got into it in, in great detail. They thought it was pretty good. Um, and whilst there's an argument that there shouldn't be any more than 200 words, when the students seem to want to post a lot, they post a lot in terms of what they were looking at um, for this subject. Um, even if I go back now and think, well, in terms of quality, what did they actually do in the smaller groups? Um, and a smaller one up here, there might be fewer posts, but I think uh, what I found was that they were generally of the same quality. That Now, they weren't being rewarded in any way for quantity, so it was really following the guide and really, you know, what, uh, trying to get them to engage in a learning community. Um, so it was all fairly experimental. Um, after they engaged in that, they then had to submit their evaluation article into... Um, oh, I don't know why it's come up with me there. Uh, into Turnitin. But perhaps I won't go there for the moment. <laughs> it's probably not a good idea. No, this is not the one that I actually thought would come up. The one that normally comes up for me, and it might be that the functionality has changed. How do you do that? <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, so they ended up submitting their assignments here. Um, and I marked these on Gradebook. We had, similar, we had similarity index issues. Um, but again, that's a, com that's a completely different topic. So I just wanted to show you uh, what, uh, what the student experience is like. So they'd submit those, um, that's fine. And then um, coming back again to this page, um, what I did with all of that after the process was finished, I did have a fair bit amount of grading. Every week I would grade for one group and I would grade their participation and then in terms of the process and then I would grade their actual assignment, which was 1,000 words. So what were their experiences of this um, uh, discussion forum. Um, this one should come up now. That one there? Yep. Thanks. Okay, and so basically I was asking about them about their experience of the discussion forum. At what moment in the discussion forum did you feel most engaged? First three days? Uh, what about the discussion forum surprised you most? Um, postings were too long and unstructured. Uh, this one, at what moment in the discussion forum did you feel most engaged? Halfway through the discussion, uh, the forum in the discussion about the impact of unacceptable behaviour, it went from one-way communication to multiple viewpoints. Uh, and the, the multiple, multiple viewpoints was definitely something that came out strongly. And by the way, the topic was sexual behaviour at work. Um, what about the discussion forum surprised you the most? I understand that participation in the forum assists in the learning process and encourages engagement. However, the process of assessing forum contributions makes me feel a little stifle in my contribution. I'm not sure if this encourages free discussion. However, the method of requiring groups to respond to particular forums eases the pressure a little. I would like to add that this is the most discussion I've seen on a forum, so something is working. And this one, um, and I guess this is also indicative of the fact that people have lives external to discussion forums. Unfortunately, I was on a two-week defence four-wheel drive course. 
um, and found it difficult to be engaged in the forum. I did, however, appreciate when those who had strong opinions led the conversation down interesting paths and stimulated discussion that could be applied to current workplaces and today's policy. Uh, and this one down the bottom. I found it was easy for me to disagree with the comments of others, but I found it very difficult to arc articulate myself in such a public forum and to put my thoughts forward in such instances. Um, just a few more. I believe the topic itself provided a stimulating basis for discussion, being a taboo subject. I think defending the comments that you make requires you to engage more uh, so as well. Academic argument, argument naturally requires more thought. Um, and the one down the bottom, what about the discussion forum surprised you? The lack of controversy, it showed how indoctrinated the ADF is. Um, and this one here, reading the submissions from other class members did help me gain a perspective from others and I benefited from their different experiences on the subject matter. Thinking these through and putting my own submissions into words certainly allowed me to feel engaged and benefit in the learning process. No real surprises. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I had a lot of fun with it, as you can see. Um, I put my cat eye up there, not to, just to say, look, you know, students um, didn't suffer too much from the bombardment of um, the whole process of interactive learning. Um, this one here, both of the cat eye were fine. They really, uh, the one on participation, I think it's question four and five. Um, so I had some fairly good responses about um, the course provided effective opportunities for active student participation and learning activities, and the course was effective for developing my thinking skills. Um, so, okay, to, where do I go to from here? Uh, well, I learnt a lot about um, the rubric that I'm working with for the discussion forum. I would say that I, I will run it again this semester, but I'll work at refining the rubric um, that I'm using for the discussion forum. Um, I need to do some work in terms of nestling the learning activities because I think that I'm overworking them in one particular area and perhaps over-assessing them there. Um, the students indicated to me in, the, in their feedback that they didn't like the behaviour of other people in their group. Now, I, I didn't bother with um, putting in rules about behaviour, but maybe it's necessary for me to actually put in a, a small peer review component where students can actually come up with some rules themselves about what they think is decent behaviour in a forum in terms of effective learning. And, and I, um, I'm going to have a look at doing that. If that fails in 2013, I might go to uh, something that's more along the lines of uh, self-peer assessment. Um, in terms of peer assessment, turns out that Moodle has a function called workshop, so I can, I can play around with that. And then the other interesting thing that's happening with discussion forums is that there is um, apparently a tracking device uh, uh, that can, uh, uh, something that uh, Moodle has coming that will actually track in terms of footprints where the students have been um, and what they're contributing. And, and the attempt there is to link it to the learning outcomes uh, that are aligned with our learning goals. So all of this um, uh, is very good, I think, in terms of developing uh, the future use of online learning. For me, it just means that I'm constantly going to be, I'm going to be constantly improving or working on improving uh, my student experience and ensuring that I have everything aligned. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.